I don't know why it is that often the weather seems to match a man's moods. But this day in particular, it had run a perfect parallel to mine. But at last the storm broke and so did I. The only way to ease my mind was to turn to action. Scotland Yard was the perfect place to begin. Inspector Lestrade, we'll get a must see him right away. I'm very sorry, Doctor. Inspector Lestrade's very busy. Will you tell him I'm here? I must see him. I'm very sorry, Doctor, but when Inspector Lestrade's in conference. Oh! You know, Dr. Watson. Ah, Dr. Watson, I'm very pleased to see you. Just having a cup of tea. Mr. Something's happened to Holmes. He's disappeared. He's banished. I haven't seen him for two days. Well, calm yourourself, Dr. Watson. Calm, calm yourself. Tell you he's disappeared. He may have been kidnapped, for all I know. Oh, kidnapped, eh? Or oh, worse. Now, look here, Dr. Watson. Just because you haven't seen him for a couple of days doesn't necessarily mean to say that he's been no kidnapped. No, right. Well, if you want any proof, you can have it. There's no time. Well, Dr. Dr. Watson. It is positively infuriating to know that something is wrong and to find a man whom you can't convince. I don't mind saying that uh, there are times when I find myself hard put to keep my patience with Inspector Lestrade. What more evidence do you need? What man going under his own volition would leave his razor behind? Oh, he probably has another one. No, he hasn't. Come on, I'll show you something else. Look, his violin out of its case. Well, what's that got to do with it? But he'd never leave his violin like that if he thought he'd be gone long. Treated like a baby. Hmm. And these concert tickets, we meant to have gone last night. Look here, Lestrade, I've been a friend of Holmes's too long not to realize the brutal truth behind all this. Well, the evidence certainly does seem to point us... Now, look, we've got to track him down as he tracked down somebody else. Do you mean use his own methods of deduction? Exactly. Now, the odds are that he's disappeared on some case. So, the best thing we can do is to go through his correspondence and see who might have employed him. Oh, look at this. Bills, bills, advertisements, bills. It'd have to be at the end of everything, wouldn't it? Ah. Now, what have we here? Chap wants Holmes to investigate his neighbor. He says a lot of people go into the house and nobody ever comes out. What do you make of that? Hmm. Well, uh... Now, look, you see that the left-handed writer, and by the feel of the paper, I'd say he was in, uh... Pretty good circumstances. Yes, well... Uh... Well, uh, attention to details. That's the secret of Holmes' success. You see, we already know something about the writer before we meet him. Yes, there's only one thing, though. Hmm? Sherlock Holmes' disappearance had nothing to do with him. Oh, why? This letter's dated two years ago. What? <laughs> yes, <laughs> there it is. Well, where else would he keep his correspondence? Or oh, anywhere on the chandelier, if it wasn't too much effort to get up there. Well, let's have a look around. Well, going through Holmes' things would take a month. No, no, we'd best get another approach. Well, have you any ideas? Wait. Dear sir, please call upon the undersigned at the earliest convenience on a matter of extreme urgency. Signed, John Smithson, ye quaint old curiosity shop. Seven Bachelor Lane. It's dated three days ago. You know, this might be it. You're right. It is. Come on, Lestrade. Holmes' life may depend on our speed. Sinister looking place. Well, it looks just like any other old curiosity shop to me. You think so? Then why was this Smithson so keen to get Holmes here, eh? Yeah, it's interesting. What, do you mean all this stuff in the window? I mean the stuff that isn't in the window. Look, I don't understand you, Dr. Watson. What do you, what do you mean? Well, it's perfectly obvious, isn't it? No. No, isn't it? Well, well, we won't get anywhere standing here. Come on. Wait a minute, Dr. Watson. I still don't know what you mean by all this stuff that isn't in the window. Come along, Mr. <laughs> Good afternoon. You, I presume, are the proprietor, John Smithson. Yes, yes, that is correct, sir. That is correct. Well, I'm Dr. Watson, and this is Inspector Lestrade. We've come to inquire about Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, a tall fellow, thin. Where's a deer-stalking cap? 
I'm afraid I've never met the gentleman, no. But you wrote him a letter saying you wish to see him on a matter of extreme urgency. You must be mistaken, sir. I'll take a look at this letter. Is that your handwriting? Oh, it isn't anything like my handwriting. Here, I'll show you what my handwriting is like. Do you notice any resemblance between the two? Well, 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 no. Well, then who could have written it? I couldn't say. Perhaps a practical joke. At any rate, all is well here, and I'm fortunately in no need of help. Oh. Well, uh, do you mind if we browse around a bit? No, browse, browse indeed, gentlemen. I like to think of my shop as an oasis of tranquility in life's busy thoroughfare. What are you doing? I'm looking for evidence that Holmes was here. Well, you heard what he said. Yes, yes, I don't believe a word of that. Something about him. I don't trust him. It's as if I'd seen him before somewhere. Well, that's not very scientific. No, perhaps not. But I'd like to have a look round anyway. Where I was going. Of course. Thank yes. you. Not at all. Excuse me. Oh, charming. Charming. <clears throat> yes, all right, the business. Ivanhoe. I must remind myself to read that again sometime. What's this? Proper deportment of young ladies in polite society. <laughs> the fabulous title. I'm afraid that that book is not for sale. What do you mean, not for sale? I understand everything in this shop is for sale. Yes, everything except the books on that shelf, sir. And now the shop is closing. Merely at two o'clock in the afternoon? Yes, for repairs. I have the decorators coming in. I'm afraid I must ask you to leave, young man. Cunning old rascal. Do you see how he tried to get rid of us, Lestrade? Oh, perhaps he has got some repairs to be done. Ah, nonsense. I insist on buying that book. Been looking for it for years. Proper deportment of young ladies in polite society. Precisely. I've been meaning to read that since I was a lad. Oh, very well, young man. Shilling, please. Thank you. Thank you. Go on, Lestrade. Oh, uh, excuse me, Governor. Not at all. There's something about that, Smithson, I don't like. Look, this isn't the book I bought. It's, it's much smaller. Safari through darkest Africa. Why is that chap nothing but a crook? Oh, this is much more interesting than that other one. Look here. You and I are going straight on back in. Now listen, while I keep you in conversation, you scout around a bit. Well, he'll suspect we're up to something. No, of course he won't. Holmes and I did this in that red-headed league affair. Worked perfectly. Come on. <laughs> Sold me the wrong book. My dear sir, I... Deliberately, if you ask me. But I assure you, sir, far as you... This is the book I wanted. Now, that's not for sale. It happens to be a first edition, in which there are only three copies in existence. Proper deportment of young ladies in polite society. Now, that's the book I bought, and that's the book I... Dr. Watson. 
Holmes is closed. I found them in an old pilot's chest. Oh, good Lord. With blood stains. You thief! Why are you getting with him? You're under arrest, son. I warn you, anything you say will be taken down or maybe you... Hey, you stop him! Don't let him get away! Oh, no, you don't. Watson! The straight, you idiot! Get out of the way! Oh! Oh! Well... Gone with the message. Who's gone with what message? An escaped convict with the message that woman left for him in the book. And it won't be easy to find him now that you two gentlemen have completely ruined my beautifully laid little trap. That's where I left my razor at home. I hardly needed it here, did I? The blood stains, Holmes. Red ink was strange. I've been helping Earl Smithson make up his ledgers. And this escaped convict, who is he? John Carson. I expect you've had a report on him. Carson? Why, he got a life sentence for killing a man with a cleaver. That's him. He was using this shop as a message center. Planting and picking up messages here from that book that you were so intent on buying. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Proper deportment for young ladies in polite society. Hmm. Smithson recognized him when he first came in. It seems that Carson was once employed here. But the old gentleman was afraid to go to the police. Why? Because Carson threatened to kill him if he did. So he sent for me instead. Hence my little disguise. You were waiting to nab Carson when he came in here for a message. Exactly. Oh, and we ruined it all. Oh, that's all right, Watson. The best laid plans of mice and men, you know. However, if we can trace the girl, then I... That'll be as hard as tracing Carson himself. Oh, I don't think it'd be all that difficult. It seems the good doctor has something up his sleeve. Hmm. Only the name and address where the girl works. Well, how the deuce do you know that? Well, when I knocked her handbag out of her hand, I found a piece of paper, and on it was uh, her hours of work and salary due to her. With the letterhead of the shop on the paper? Well done, Watson. Oh, nothing really. <laughs> Pierre's dress shop, 17 Cottington Street. You know, uh, I'd say that girl had the look of a manicure about her. Don't you agree? Well, you know, Watson, I'm uh, almost afraid not to. <laughs> and now, mesdames and messieurs, you will see the supreme creation of Pierre with me, myself. <laughs> and your niece, monsieur, she will find this ensemble irresistible. You did say your niece, Mr. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, returning for the holidays from school in Switzerland, sir. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's exquisite, no? Such symmetry, such subtle lines. But uh, with such discretion. Oh, la jeunesse, la youth. <laughs> I see it's a bit daring, isn't it? But it's daring age, monsieur, and now the 20th century. I wonder, sir, if I might have a word with a young lady in private. But, but... Uh, Officially, Monsieur, I'm Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. But, but, uh, I do not understand. Never before has one of my girl acted so. Would you mind telling me where he's hiding now, Miss? I don't know. I swear I don't. 
And yet you left a message for him. A gentleman friend gave me the message and told me to leave it in the book. Probably a pal of Carson's, if she's telling the truth. What was in the message? Uh, there was just a name and an address. I see. And what was the name? Jeremiah Westlake. But I forget the address. Jeremiah Westlake. There was once a judge called Jeremiah Westlake. He retired several years ago. Yes, and I think we'll discover that Jeremiah Westlake was the judge who gave Carson his life sentence. And now Carson is looking for him. And now Carson is looking for him. and Inspector Lestrade. Who's she talking to? This is what you want. Court now in session. Stay talking. Speak up, speak up, Mr. Holmes. Or has the cat got your tongue? <clears throat> judge Westlake, I presume? Former Judge Westlake. Did Sherlock Holmes ever hear of him, Miss Bell? No, no, no. You're confusing him with the other Sherlock Holmes, the famous pastry chef. Oh, I never eat pastry. Disagrees with me. Of course, there's still another Sherlock Holmes, the third one, the famous detective. Oh, that one. Well, young man, say your piece. Court adjourns it exactly one minute. Ten years ago, you sentenced a man called John Carson to a term of life imprisonment for murder. Carson? Carson? Good night, Mr. Bell. And that would be the butcher's leave our case. Murdered a man with it. Oh, yes. Unpleasant chap, Carson, if I remember correctly. Well, Mr. Holmes? When you sentenced him, he swore to kill you. Did he? Well, what of it? They all do routine. But he's just escaped from prison and has learned your address. Nonsense. Bluff. Sheer bluff. Yes, Mr. Bill? They all bluff, young man. I wouldn't sleep a wink if I believed everything they swore to do to the judge. Sleep like tops, the two of us. In bed at ten and up at six. This man represents a very real threat, sir. That's all. Court the judge. See the idea. And that gentleman means postponed indefinitely. Do forgive us our little whimsy gentleman. Yeah, how you know? Uh, they're our children, really. We have no others, you see. It's a delightful hobby, Mrs. Westlake. About this man, Carson, sir. With your permission, I'd like to place a guard in the house. Until we apprehend him, of course. Oh, dear me, no. Tumbling heaven knows what all over the place. I wouldn't hear of it, Inspector. We appreciate it, though. Speaking as a medical man, sir, knowing this murderer's mentality, I must advise you to... Sorry, Doctor. But we can't give in to idle threats. Why, we wouldn't have any law if we did. Won't you gentlemen join us for tea? Thank you, Mrs. Westlake, but perhaps another time. No, you mustn't take these things so seriously. Good day, Mrs. Westlake, and thank you. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Do come again sometime. You must see our function duty. With pleasure. All the same, sir, I'm going to station my men outside the house. Well, all right, but uh, tell them not to step on my petunias. He says he's got a message for the judge, sir. I'm Westlake, my man. Here you are, Governor. Dear Judge, I'm one of your old court attendants. I'm on my deathbed and I've got to make out my will for my little granddaughter. Will you come and help me and oblige John Casket, 67 Clifton Road? Ever have a court attendant called John Casket, sir? Well, it's hard to say. I've had so many court attendants. Who gave you this note? Plug on the street, sir. But he said to tell the judge he was in bed, down. 
What do they look like? How about this eye, sir? Thin face? Seedy looking, if you know what I mean. Mm, that's personal, all right. What should pay you? A couple of bob, sir. Oh, there you are, sir. Just the sort of thing to send you off on an errand of mercy to your death. Dear me, I never cease to marvel at the duplicity of human nature. Can I car get the two bob, sir? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh. Thank you, Connie, Connie. Well, Holmes, we've got him. 67 Clifton Road? Yes, Wilkins. Yes, sir. Get the men together. We're going to Clifton Road. Not so fast, Lestrade. This might be a ruse. Of course it's a ruse. Of another kind. To get you to abandon the police cordon around the house. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, well, if that's his idea, he's in for a surprise. I'm going to keep the cordon here. Good idea, Lestrade. Now, don't you worry, sir. Why, well, not the least bit alarmed, sir. I'm going to have my tea. Don't budge from here. If you let anyone in this house, I'll have your skin. Yes, sir. Come on. to break into the judge's house. Lestrade, who did that messenger describe? Carson, of course. And who else? You mean, who else? Himself. He described himself, Lestrade. Cabby, turn around and go back to the house at once. As fast as you can. At last, I understood the cause for Holmes' concern. We had gone off and left the killer with the very man he'd sworn to kill. John Carson wasn't the kind of man to miss an opportunity like this. He was there, and we were not. There was nothing left for us to do but hope. And every passing second was against us. Of course we're real. We're as real as any children. You were right about John Carson, Mr. Holmes. You were very right. Ah, you you my life. Not at all, sir. Not at all. Yes, but I, I must do something to repay you. Uh, I'll teach you to be a puppeteer. A puppeteer? Yes, you'll love it. Greatest relaxation in the world. Teaches you to forget men like John Carson. Now, here. You hold the thing like this. Mm -hmm. And with this string, you move ahead. And with this, you move the feet. You pitch your voice up with this. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Pretty good thinking. Not bad, anyway. 